Wow, this day is shaping up good, right? Mm. <laughs> There's Ryan again, the boy. But even though turtles are, are a hermaphrodite, right? Mm. Turtles are herm uh, turtles. Uh, snails are hermaphrodite. Oh, I can't see him now. All right. So he's really friendly. The male is so affectionate. He wants to be on me. Whenever possible. When he's awake, he wants to be on me. Mm -hmm. So it took him a little couple of minutes to wake up this morning. I actually gave him a couple of drops on my fingernail of licorice tea. Uh, and he loves that. Mm. And that's good for him. Also, John said he would probably love chamomile tea. So I'll ask Christopher later if we can make some chamomile tea. And I'm actually going to bathe the snails in chamomile tea. We're going to do a snail ritual today. That's the plan, right? We're going to do a snail ritual. Mm. Bathe them and, and give them lots of love and let them know. And they love them when the water's a little warm. So I'll wait till it cools off and it's just warm enough for a little bath for them. I have a tiny little bucket, like a little purple bucket that I'm going to use. Mm -hmm. Nothing fancy. You can't submerge them i think garden snails will drown mm -hmm. is that uh, eliza right there i think so let's take a look if that's her that means she's waking up that's not her that's a rock <laughs> that's the <a> crystal <laughs> but i do got to keep my eye on the tank because then all of a sudden she is not going to be there like, they get out before you know it. It's really weird. Mm. He wants to climb onto my belly, but I'm not going to let him. I'll lose him. Mm. So, are you getting ready for your for your uh, chamomile tea bath, Ryan? Mm-hmm. He knows all about it. He's very excited. I can sense that he was really very excited. He's looking for more licorice tea, but I don't know. I can't get over there right now. There she is. She's on the bottom there. But I, I sense that she's starting to stick her head out here and there because she's like, what is going on out there? Or are they having like a party without me and stuff? Mm. Yeah, Liza, that's what happens. Everybody goes to a party and you're left behind. Maybe Ryan will want to go back in and be with you. I'm thinking he is going. Mm. So I think what we'll we'll film the uh, the snail bath. I think that's a great idea. Sure. We should do that painting today. We need to paint that box. All right. I really want to get started on that. We have the artwork already. We got it all mapped out in our minds. We got the paints right here. His name is Paul Rivera. Mm -hmm. I got the paint right here. His name is, yeah, he's back on the thing. He's going back in. Of his own free will. Mm -hmm. I want to go in my house, Mommy. Mm. I'm going to wake Liza up and see what she's doing today. Mm -hmm. Right now, she's just laying in there amongst the sludge. Yes. But that's what Liza likes. All those pillows. Yeah, she does like that. <laughs> but I am feeling a little bit randy. You are, Ryan. Yes. Liza. <laughs> Come to Daddy. Oh, gee, don't say that. Mm. Nina. Yeah. You gave him such a pretty crystal, really. Mm-hmm. We have a snail coming this color, but um, like a, a snail figure. But I was going to put him in there with them. You still might, right? I think you should, Lena. You should put the snail god in. All right. The snail god goes in. When's he going to get here? Soon. He's coming. Postage from China and all. Mm. Yeah, it looks good. I'm doing like, right now, Ryan is doing like Windows on the World. If you ever went to the, 
<laughs> it's no longer there because it was in the World Trade Center, 102nd floor, but that's the restaurant that turns around and faces the view of the world. And um, I was there once. I had uh, a wedding there. Chris's old bandmate, Scott, and got married and the reception was in window the what the ceremony was in windows on the world too yeah the 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 moil or whatever that jewish guy is the rabbi yeah <laughs> the moil <laughs> yeah the the wedding thing itself was in like the the ap the appetizer room <laughs> And then everybody fell on the food like a bunch of ravenous. Uh, there was one old Jewish guy there who was shoving shrimps, giant shrimps in his pockets. Shameless. Amazing, right? Mm. I never saw that at a wedding before. Oh, you see a lot of things at weddings, so you really do. Did you ever go to Windows on? No, because I wasn't, it wasn't really established yet. No? Mm. Really? I felt like it would fall down because it was the middle of the winter. It was a winter wedding. And was like the windiest night of the year. There was a windstorm. Not, no snow, nothing, but bitterly cold and windy. And when me and Chris were walking from the car to the Twin Towers, I said, those fucking towers are going to go down tonight. It's so fucking windy, you know. But then it got to be not funny anymore because I could feel the building moving when we were eating dinner. It was really swaying, really swaying. And I felt like sick and I realize now it was a premonition. It was a feeling of premonition, 100%. Because just a couple of years later, that building would come down. Mm. And everybody on that floor would die, be dead. All the workers, all the bus boys, everybody. They were all making the usual great big breakfast for all the executives on the morning of September 11th, when those went down. Mm. How do you feel about having uh, premonitions? Like, how, do you, how does that make you feel when, when things that you feel in your gut come to pass? Well, when they're bad things, I'm always upset. And I'm like, I didn't want to see that. But but in a way, it's like, what difference does it make? Because you can't... Like, I didn't know for sure those buildings were going to go down. It was just a sick feeling. A sick feeling that, that came and went. But actually, the elevator... I, I started having panic attacks going down in the elevator when we were leaving. Mm -hmm. And I just remember feeling like, I just want to get out of this building. And like there was a slight delay or something between floors. And I nev I've never liked elevators to begin with. Right. I've never liked elevators, period. Even if it's only two or uh, one floor, I don't like it. <laughs> I really don't. I don't like getting into an elevator, and I don't... I guess it's a common enough feeling, but... When you're coming down from the 102nd floor... Uh, it's like a rocket ship. That's how fast it really has to be, almost. And then when there's a problem... You really do feel like you're suspended in some kind of fucking hell. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I don't know what this topic is about today. Well, it's just going. Stream of consciousness. Let's see where it goes. Let's talk about about everything we're feeling. You know, another day like that. Just talk about everything we're feeling. All right. 
And how do you feel about the Twin Towers going down? Uh, how do you feel about the Twin Towers? Well, it's horrible. But it was unavoidable. It was in the works for a long time. It was going to happen. It was a target. The only target, really. It should have been really well protected by our government because they had that knowledge. They had the knowledge that it was the biggest and most accessible target for any third world country to take their frustrations out on. It was not protected. It was not reinforced. And it was absolutely unavoidable because our own government, when I say our, I mean the American government, was 100% in on it and behind it. And you've heard that, that theory before. Yes, but that is the true theory. It is not a theory, it is a fact, and it is reality. So that's a revelation for today. And if anyone has any questions, this is John, I'll be happy to answer them. Lena, have you any questions about it? How does the government get end up th those countries work hand in hand with the with our government and always have the third world countries the terrorists yes there's a hierarchy that has nothing to do with the people of the of the land the hard working families that can be said on both sides on all sides there's a whole nother world there's nothing to do with God's world hmm. Liza likes your warm solar plexus right here yeah, she does, huh? It's very warm. It's just going to wake her up. You watch. He's falling into a state of suspended animation. Mm. Maisie's crawling around. She was on bed with me all night. Good girl. Mm -hmm. Now she's going back to her box. She's figuring out a way to get around my drum. See, I don't want her stepping on that drum, but... I mean, she could. She's very light. But she's figuring out a way to just pop over it, and she'll do it. <clears throat> Want to play a little drum today? There she goes, right into the box. Yeah. I'd like to play drum. I'd like to paint. I would like to play guitar later uh, with Christopher. There is a lot I want to do today. Mm. First things first, stretches, vitamins, juice. Mm-hmm. You want to take a little microdose of the silly cybin today? Yes, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for for fibromyalgia, I feel, and for um, chronic pain of any kind, very a very t small dose of psilocybin, <clears throat> magic mushroom. To the rest of you people who don't know what psilocybin is. <clears throat> we grind it up. Christopher is kind enough to grind it up in a tobacco grinder. We get these dried mushrooms. There's a guy who lives nearby who uh, can supply them. Mm -hmm. They're legal in most states, but I don't, I don't know that they're legal here yet, but they will be, just like marijuana. And, um, and it alleviates uh, chronic pain, but more importantly, it alleviates the anxiety that chronic pain produces. Like, if you're in really bad chronic pain all the time, um, and fibromyalgia and recovery from a bad injury will do that, you can, but the pain can be exacerbated by a million because you've got fibromyalgia to boot, and that's a, that reacts to any trauma to your body. So, psilocybin microdosing cuts that anxiety as well as the pain because the anxiety 
is so crippling. It, you're, you have this anxiety because you fear the pain. After a while, you're so shell-shocked by pain that you, you fear it. So you fear moving, mm -hmm. which in turn totally sets you back in physical therapy. You just choose not to do it, right? Because you're like, I, I, don't do, I won't do the pain anymore. It's, it's, like, it's like when they test on animals and there's like a sh uh, an area in the pen that shocks them. And after a while, they just won't go th to that area anymore. Even if there's food in that area, they won't go there because it's not worth the trouble. Right. Animal testing. I, I, that's got to end. All right. We're working on that. And you know we're making great strides. Nelly is making great strides in that area, too. Yeah. Thank you, Nelly. It's all right, Mom. We're all doing what we can. You know, I'm, I, I'm going to um, send you a link. And, and uh, please, no pictures. No pictures. No pictures, Mom. Nelly, I appreciate everything you do for animals, but when you post those links with the pictures and the, and the labs, I can't stand it. Mm. No, I'm not going to send you anything like that, but I am going to ask you to make a contribution today, okay? Yes, anything. Just no pictures, please. All right, Lena. Put your snails away and let's get going. All right. 